Hi, my name is Steve Nelson and you're watching 4-Minute Film School. Today we're going to be covering contrast, lighting positions, outdoor shooting, and manipulating light for a desired look. Because this is Advanced Lighting Part 2. Start the clock. Contrast is the difference between your brightest and your darkest spots. To achieve a high contrast image, you need some harsh lighting. For instance, we have this one key light focused in, undiffused, on our subject Angie over here. Now, if she goes blind, it'll be alright because we have insurance and I'll be covered financially. But you probably don't, so you got to be really careful with your lights because they're extremely hot and they're really bright and they can cause a lot of damage and they're very dangerous. Uh, to water. <laughs> now you heard me talk about the key light before and since this is advanced lighting you should probably know about three point lighting by now. The other lights are your fill and your back lights. It should really be four point lighting because the back light should light the actor from behind and the background light should light your background. Your fill light, which will usually be diffused, is added to our once high contrast image, and now her face has become a lot more soft. It's now a low contrast image. Light your background with the background light and turn on the backlight to separate the subject from the background. Let's see if you can say that 10 times fast. Industry trivia. What is a C47 in the film industry? Find out after the break. If you call them clothespins on set, you'll soon find yourself dangling from a skyscraper attached only by C-47s. Foreign member Miss Supernatural says, remember, you cannot effectively lighten a shot in post, but you can darken it. So if you need to choose between having an overexposed sky or an underexposed subject, go with the overexposed sky, because you can work some editing magic to darken just the sky through compositing like we did in the 3D episode. Or you could always just light your subjects with daylight bulbs, but that might be difficult at an outdoor shoot. If you want to shoot outside at daytime for a scene that takes place at night, white balance to a warm color or to the indoor lighting setting and turn the brightness down in editing. Now lighting is how you go about painting your movies. Except no painter I've ever heard of had to wear heat resistant gloves, which you better do. But that's neither here nor there. You can go about painting in your movies by adding gels to your lights. Now sure, they serve a practical purpose, but they also serve an artistic purpose. Try mixing up different colored gels on different lights. In this shot, we threw some wild blue gels on top of our backlight, and then a nice green gel on top of our key light that shines right on Angie. And not only does it look cool and artistic, but it also creates depth between Angie and the background, which is good if you like depth, and you should like depth. Remember in the film noir episode when we put blinds in front of the light? Well you can experiment with different things to scatter your light. According to forum member Uncle Al, using a cookie aka Cuculorus or Gobo to throw regular shadows on the background can give an impression of unusual depth or just unusualness to a set. So if you want to get onto film sets or just get some movies made with great lighting, always make sure to have these things on hand. Gaffer tape, or if you're poor, duct tape, C47s, clothespins, extension cords, diffusion paper, china balls, color gels, and a regular old surge protector. Well, that's the end of Advanced Lighting Part Dose. I'm Steve Nelson, and I hope you guys learned a lot. If you didn't, then I'm going to murder you and your entire family. Have a good day.